Hello, today I want to talk to you guys about some basics of cycling. Some of this stuff uh, you may already know, uh, but if you're just a very beginning cyclist, then some of it will be very helpful to you. But I think that even if you've been cycling for a couple years, you will still will find some information helpful in here, okay? So first thing I want to talk about, especially if you're very new to cycling, is uh, getting started in what I call the push-off. And especially if you have pedals that clip in, or even if you don't, when you get started, you want to get one foot clipped in and you want to bring that pedal up to right about maybe two o'clock. So if we think about a clock and then 12 is the top of your pedal stroke, six would be the bottom, three would be out in front of you, nine o'clock would be out behind you. What I see a lot of times when people are new is they put that foot on the pedal all the way down at six and then they get a very weak push off so they don't get much speed. And then as they try to get that other foot into the pedal, sometimes they fall over. So instead, get that pedal into what I call the power position, which would be right around uh, two o'clock, so that as the foot that's on the ground pushes you off, so one foot's gonna push off the ground and the other foot is gonna push down on the pedal. And that's gonna get you momentum going, which makes it easier to get in that other foot. The other thing you might do if you find that you are you know, struggling with that momentum, just push down on the pedal without engaging it so you can get a couple of revolutions and get more speed up. That gives you time to click in that second foot, okay? Another real basic thing I see with uh, people who are just starting out cycling is that they're sighting. You know, because they're nervous, they tend to look right in front of their front wheel or maybe two or three feet in front of their front wheel. And unknowingly, what that does is it causes their steering to be very erratic and it's really hard to keep their line. And so instead, what you wanna do is you wanna look out in front of you. Um, I would say probably at least 50 yards, maybe 100 yards. Look out in front of you and then that will help your bike stay straighter. Um, almost immediately when you do this change, you can feel it. And if you wanna, next time you're out on a nice safe uh, road or trail, no cars around, you know, even if you're experienced cycle, like, well, try riding and looking a foot in front of you and watch how wobbly you get and unsteady you get, okay? And yeah, also another reason to look out in front of you is it helps you read the road. You know, is the road starting to go up and how much so? That gives you an idea of when you're gonna need to start shifting your gears. Is there a corner coming up? Can you see all the way around that corner or is it a blind corner? Might there be driveways up there that cars might come out of? Right? So the more you read the road ahead of you, the more it helps you figure out how you're going to bike that path of road, switching gears, uh, maybe changing your weight, which will help turn the bike. Okay, So uh, pedal stroke. A lot of times when people get started, what they have a tendency to do is just to push down from maybe like 11 or 12 just to 3. And this really loads up your quads. If you don't have pedals that clip in, this is practically the only way you can bike. Um, but as soon as you get pedals that clip in, what you really want to do is you want to focus on from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock. So really think about engaging at the bottom of the pedal stroke and pulling through. Another thing I see a lot of people do is they pedal with their heel way up. And it's, instead when you get down here, let the heel drop a little bit. Not below the foot, but not up here. So let the heel drop and pull back. So get it so your pedal stroke becomes more smooth, so you're pulling through the bottom rather than pushing over the top. And this is a great compare and contrast drill. So next time you're out on a ride, just for like 30 seconds, just put all your brain power in pedaling from 12 to three, and notice how jerky you start to become. Your hips will start to move a lot, plus your quads will get really fatigued. Then for about 30 seconds, just put all of your you know, your brain power in your pedal from four to eight, really sweeping through the bottom. And notice that you become a lot smoother. Typically when I have people do this, they'll see their cadence go up as well, okay? Another great drill to do is one-legged cycling. So a lot of people start on their indoor trainer, unclip one foot and just pedal with one leg. And this really helps you identify the dead spots because when it's you're new to this, you'll pedal down and then you'll be stuck because you won't have that momentum coming up. Um, if you're more advanced cyclist, these are great drills to do out on the road. Um, that makes it a little bit harder than on a trainer. Always, if you do that, make sure it's like an empty parking lot or a trail with no cars around, something that's very safe, especially your first time doing it, okay? Um, steering. When people are new to cycling, a lot of times they think the only way that they turn the bike is actually by turning the handlebars. 
but you do a lot of your steering through cornering with your body weight in your hands. So here's a great drill for you to, to demonstrate this and practice this. Next, and again, another, you need to find a very safe road to do this because initially you might go off, you know, left or right a little bit. Um, but if you have an empty parking lot or a trail and it's pretty empty, as you're riding straight down the road, both hands on the handlebars, just put a little pressure like on the left and you'll notice your whole bike goes left. Then put a little pressure on your right hand and you'll notice that your bike starts to go to the right. So without actually steering the handlebars, just by changing the pressure on your hands, the bike starts to change directions. And we can use that information both when we're looking back behind us because we can counterbalance and when we're going through turns, okay? So play around with that so you can start to feel that on your bike and that'll help you um, develop that skill riding forward. So let's talk about also with turning um, using the knee. So when you go through a turn, let's say I'm gonna turn right, I always want my inside pedal, we want that foot to be up at 12 o'clock. If that foot's down at six o'clock as we go through the turn, if we go you know, steep enough, that pedal can hit the bottom of the road and then maybe cause you to crash. So, on your, your, the inside knee is the pedal is going to be up at 12. And the other thing you can do, and you can try this while you're riding straight in a, in a safe place. As you're riding straight, just take one knee, get that foot up to like 12 o'clock, and take that knee and open it up. And the more you open it up, the more it'll shift that bike, in this case, to the left. And then you can you know, switch the right side so the right pedal's up, open up that knee, and you'll go through. The reason uh, for this is when you're going through turns, if you want to make a tighter turn, the more you open up that inside knee with the pedal at 12, the more the steeper angle it'll get you through the turn. And then what you can start to do is counterbalance. So if you have all your weight on your left hand and you're going on a left-hand turn and you really open up your left knee, that's probably going to be too sharp of a turn. So the way to counterbalance that is you open up the left knee and you weight the right hand. And then that way you go through the turn, but you have more stability coming out of the turn. So play around with that. Play around with how much you open your knee and how much you weight the opposite hand and how that helps you steer through corners without really changing, you know, steering the, the handlebars. You're steering with pressure and then sort of the angle of the knee, okay? So play around with that. Um, when it comes to looking, you know, it's very common for new cyclists, they're riding down the road, they look left a little bit, and all of a sudden they're in the middle of traffic. So find a space where you know no cars around you and start to practice how you look. So first, just look a little bit and really quickly. And as that becomes more comfortable, try to look a little bit further. And then try to look all the way to the side. And then when you're comfortable there, start to look back a little bit. Here's a tip for you. The, the further you look back, the more you're off to drift to that side, right? So if I'm looking left, I'm gonna drift left. But if, I, if as I'm riding down the road and I put a little bit more pressure, just a tiny bit on the right hand and I look left, it'll keep my bike going straight. So this is another counterbalance technique. You know, if, if the further I'm looking back, the more I might need to weight that right hand to keep going straight down the road. So play around with that. Um, Another thing that uh, people, uh, new cyclists, really have trouble with is getting water to drink with or, or removing one hand from the handlebars. So what you wanna do here, just like within looking, you wanna take baby steps. So if you're riding down the road and you have your hands on the handlebars, just take one hand and just take it like an inch or half an inch off the handlebars so it's there if you need it. And get comfortable riding just one hand and then ride with the other hand. Then start to take that hand and maybe tap your, your stem or tap the frame and come back and then tap the water bottle and come back. And then as you become more comfortable, just maybe leave your hand on the water bottle for a second and then just pull the water bottle out slightly and put it back in. Then get to where you can hold the water bottle and ride with one hand. So there's lots of reasons to be able to steer your bike with one hand. Signaling, you know, if you're riding in a group and you need to tell people there's glass or something on the road, you need to do that with the other hand. If you're letting cars know you're turning left or right or stopping, all one-handed, especially if you want to drink, um, you need that one hand to change the bottle, right? So lots of reasons to get really good at riding with one hand, especially as a triathlete, when you're getting in and out of aero position, oftentimes people have a hard time with that. So 
instead of doing both hands at once, which you could do when you're more advanced, you're here on the drops and then you put one hand in arrow position and you're stable and then you put the other hand there. And then when you get out of it, same thing, keep one hand here, take one hand off so that there's a time in there when you're riding with just one hand on the weight of the handlebars or the arrow bars. So it's definitely a skill you should acquire. Um, all right. So same thing in the arrow position. Um, when you're in the arrow position, if you're looking right down in front of you, which may be more comfortable for your neck, you may have a hard time keeping a straighter line. So find a position where you can look further up the road and you may you know, spend a lot of time here, but then every once in a while, just take a short break to relax the neck. Um, but if you find that you're having a struggle keeping your line in arrow position, then look up a little bit further. Once you've mastered all the, you know, on the, on the brake hoods, riding and looking around and grabbing a water bottle, you then need to go through that whole thing again in arrow position. So even when you're fairly good at handling, when you get into arrow position and you look left, you'll probably notice that you veer left. So go through those same steps, get an arrow position, tiny bit of looking, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then same thing we talked about grabbing the water. Get good at being in arrow position and reaching down and grabbing the water. Because you might need to be in arrow position and still need to point stuff out while you're riding with a group of people. Okay? Uh, standing. So I noticed uh, the other day I was teaching a newer cyclist how to stand. And I noticed that when people aren't used to it, they try to keep their bike frame dead still and that really loads up the quads. I, I mimicked what they're doing and I had an incredibly hard time and it just fried my quads within seconds. Instead, what you need to do is you ne need to let the bike frame rock back and forth. So when you stand up and you put a little weight on this side, the, the bike frame, instead of being just straight, it'll start to shift side to side underneath your body. So you gotta get used to that and let that happen. Definitely do not try to keep the bike just perfectly steady because it's way too much work on your quads. The other thing that people have a hard time when they stand up is they often are not in a hard enough gear. And so they stand up and their legs go like that and then they kind of fall down. So sometimes when you're standing up, you may need to shift to one or two gears harder so you have more resistance on the pedals as you go up. So play around with that. Uh, cadence. Uh, sometimes people will start off at a really low cadence. Generally, it's considered that 90 revolutions per minute, 90 RPMs is sort of ideal. Uh, some people bike at a lower cadence, but if you're biking at 70, then we really want to get that up to 75, 80, 85. Do some drills like where you just go for 30 seconds or a minute and you cycle at, you know, probably 10 RPMs higher than you're used to. And then if you're already at 90, do some that are maybe up in the 9,500 RPMs just for 30 seconds to a minute so that it makes riding at 90 a little bit easier. If you don't have cadence on your computer, get cadence on your computer. Primarily, especially if you're new, people have a hard time shifting, knowing when to shift. Well, here's a great tip about how you can use cadence to help you shift. Let's say you, you want set your cadence at 90 and you're riding down the road and all of a sudden you notice that your cadence goes to 85, 80, well, that's a signal to you that you need to shift to an easier gear because then you can get back to 90 cadence. Same thing as you maybe start to go downhill, your legs start spinning really fast or, or you stop cycling because they're, they're spinning faster, you know, that's comfortable. Well, that's a sign your cadence is probably up, you know, above 100 that you need to shift to a harder gear or maybe even the big chain ring, right, the one on the left side so that you have more resistance and so now you can get back to 90 and you can pick up speed. Okay, so those are some really basic cycling tips. Uh, hopefully there's something in there that you found value in, even if you've been riding for a while. All right, thanks a lot.